In this demonstration, we'll take a policy document and we'll use Word styles to apply a decent layout to it so that we can properly reference the policy content. So what you'll see on the screen here is what looks like a, a long string of unformatted text. It looks like that because that's exactly what it is. So what we're going to do at this point is just apply using word styles some basic layout. So here I'm applying heading 1 to a major heading. This is the first minor heading, so I'm going to apply heading 2. There's a second minor heading, so heading 2, heading 1, and heading 2. And we're left with these bits of actual policy text, which is where we make the policy points. So what I'm going to do with these is create a new style. It won't be a heading style this time. Instead, it will be a paragraph style. So I'll bring up the Styles menu. I will add a style. Based on normal, it's a paragraph style. Let me give it a name. I'll call it Policy Point. And I'll make sure that I've added it to the Styles Gallery. If I now say OK, I now have a style called Policy Point. And at this point you might think, well, what's the purpose of that? Because it looks exactly the same as normal text. Fair point. We'll see what the point is a little bit later. Now, this as it stands now, might be all right for an article or some other kind of document. But when it comes to policy, we really want all of these provisions to be numbered and referenced. So that's the next step that we're going to undertake. We want the major headings to be numbered 1, 2 and 3. And then we want a subsidiary numbering system underneath that for the minor headings so that this one for instance would be 1.1 this one would be 1.2 and then we want to go beyond that and we want to number the individual provisions so this would be 1.2.1 1.2.2 and so on now obviously we can go through the document and hard type all of those but then every time we change a provision take one out or put a new one in our, our numbering disappears. Well, we don't need to do that. Word will help us do something much more effective. So let's start by selecting the first major heading. And I'm going to go up to the paragraph numbering controls. And I'm going to pull down this tool here, which is called multi-level list. Now, there is a picture of the heading system that I really want. I don't go beyond two levels of heading, um, but in this system it will go as many as you like. Uh, so I'm going to click on that and you'll see that instantly with a single stroke it has applied that numbering style to all of my headings, which is absolutely fantastic. To the point where if I want to put a new heading in here now, um, so this would be the third minor heading in first section. As soon as I tell Word that that is a heading 2, it will apply the numbering. OK, now the next thing that I want to do is apply numbering to these paragraphs here. Now you'll remember that I called these policy point. So anything that I apply the style policy point to, um, I want to be numbered in that way. So I also to call this policy point. I won't go on and make all of the other text policy point style so that you can see how I would do that in the main document. So if I select any paragraph that I want to be a policy point. I'm going to go back to this multi-level list again, 
but this time I'm going to define new multi-level list. That will open up a scary looking dialog which I'm about to make look even scarier by hitting the more button. So the level that I want to modify is level 3. Now at the moment level 3 is assigned to a third level heading but I don't want to assign it to my third level heading I want to assign it to the policy point style and now hopefully you can see the point of creating that as a special style earlier on. I want it to be at level 3 in the gallery. Everything else looks pretty good at this point so I'm going to say OK. Now notice that for some reason that's actually applied heading 3 to my document which I really didn't want to happen. I want it to be policy point. Uh, and for some reason Word often does this to me. So I'm going to hold my nerve and simply repeat the steps. Policy point, level 3, all looking good. And now the right thing has happened. And no, I have no idea why Word didn't get it right the first time. But you'll notice that where I've turned this text into policy point instead of normal, that style has automatically applied. All I need to do to get it applied elsewhere is to select the text and hit the policy point button. And you'll see that the numbering has automatically picked up the numbering of the heading above it. I'll do that with the last bit of text down there and you'll notice that that's also picked it up. Now under here, the new heading, I can put an additional piece of policy text and then all I need to do to get that numbered correctly is to apply policy point style to it. So that all looks pretty good. Now let me show you another benefit of using styles because as it turns out I'm not keen on the Calibri font. I'd rather this be something a little more distinctive and I'm going to choose Century Gothic but then make it slightly smaller. Okay that looks pretty good. Um, I don't like this wide spacing either so in the paragraph formatting I'm going to make it single spaced and I'm also going to reduce the after to let's say two points so that the text occupies a little bit less paper. Now you'll notice that it's only what I've highlighted that that change has been made to. But watch what I do now. If I right click up here on the policy point style in the gallery the first command here is update policy point to match selection. If I click that, everything that is formatted in policy point style will match the new formatting because I've said take this example and apply that to everything that's labelled as policy point text. So this is really looking rather good now and I can do a similar thing with any of my headings to make those look more distinctive too. So I would rather, for instance, that the major headings be in bold and I would like um, a line across the page under each of them to divide the document up. Well, if I do it just to one, you can apply the same technique, right click on heading one, update heading one to match selection and it will apply that formatting to heading two. I can do a similar thing with um, the minor headings, the level 2 headings, and this time I'll pick one somewhere in the middle of the document. Again, I'm going to make it bold, but then I'm going to put some subtle shading behind it as well. Uh, and again, I can, at a simple command, make sure that that's reflected in every instance of that style throughout the document. So that looks pretty good. Um, one other thing that I can do by using this multi-level layout is generate um, a, a smart contents table. 
So if I go into references, having made some room at the top, I can now insert my preferred style of table of contents. And I'm going to keep it fairly straightforward. I'm going to use an automatic style of table. And as you see, it picks up the numbering, it will reflect the hierarchy of major and subheadings. And if I then, for instance, were to put a page break in here and move that onto the second page, I can go back and update my table of contents. And as you can see here, that's now showing those as appearing on table uh, on page two. So there you go. There's a simple example of how to apply policy style um, to your writing.